Hello students, in this video we're going to find out how to find the y-intercept of a quadratic function and find the domain and the range of the quadratic function. You've already been working with quadratic functions, you know how to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry, which is this first part. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll get into the new material. So remember that your vertex form for your quadratic function is y minus k equals a times x minus h quantity squared, or sometimes we add the k to both sides, in which case it would be y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Okay, and that's the vertex form for our quadratic function. So this one is already written, one is already written in vertex form. You can see that a is two, h, because this is a plus sign, is negative four, because in the form for our vertex form over here, we have a minus. So we could think of this as two times x minus negative four, because minus a negative is a positive, squared minus four. So then let's identify our h and k, and that's going to be the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola. Remember the vertex is that minimum or maximum point, the turning point of the parabola. So the vertex is at negative four, comma, negative four. The x value is negative four, and the y value is also negative four. So I'm gonna plot that point on my graph, and that is right here. All right, and then since a is equal to two, right here, a is equal to two, and that's a positive number, I know that my parabola is opening upwards, so I know it's going like this. But I'm not sure how wide or how skinny to make it, and so far we've just drawn it going the correct direction. But now we want to actually make it the correct uh, width. So we need another point on the parabola in order to do that. Let's go ahead and find the y-intercept and the y-intercept might serve as our second point if it's something that we can put on our graph. So let's try that. Find the y-intercept. You might remember from graphing lines that when you graph a line you're looking for the y-intercept, it's that place where the graph crosses the y-axis. So we're just looking for where does the graph cross the y-axis, or in other words, where is x equal to zero, right? x is one, two, three, going this way, negative one, negative two, negative three, going this way. Right here, x is equal to zero on the y-axis. So to, whenever you want to find a y-intercept, you always put zero in for x and solve for y. So we have y equals two times, remember put zero in for x, so we're putting a zero in right here. Um, zero plus four squared minus four. Okay, so I just rewrote my equation that I had right here, but I'm substituting zero for x. And then simplify that, we have two times four squared minus four. Four squared is 16 times two minus four. So we have 32 minus four or 28. Okay, what that tells me is that I have the point zero comma 28 on my graph. Or when x is zero, y is 28. Okay, well obviously I can't put that on my graph because this graph is only showing going up to five. So that's fine. You were supposed to find the y-intercept, so go ahead and we found that, right? We said that's what the y-intercept is. Okay, but it's not gonna help us out with our graph. So let's find one more point on the parabola so that I can get a better graph, a um, more accurate graph. Let's just pick another point since our vertex was here at negative four. We could uh, find the y-value when x is equal to negative three. So let's do that. y equals two times, I'm gonna put negative three in for x now, plus four squared minus four. All right, so I have two times negative three plus four is one squared minus four. So I have two times one, which is just two. Two minus four is equal to negative two. So that gives me another point that I know is on my parabola the point negative three when x is negative three, y is negative two. And now I can plot that on my parabola, negative three, negative two gives me a point right here. And now I can draw a much more accurate graph, right? I know it's gonna look like this. And actually, since I know the graph is symmetric about this line, I kinda got two for the price of one when I figured that out. 
because since it goes to the vertex down here at negative 4, negative 4, and then when I went over 1 and up 2, I had a point on the graph. So if I go left 1 and up 2, I know I've got another point right there on the graph, just by symmetry. Okay, so I can actually really get a nice accurate graph of my parabola. And that's supposed to be going through that point, but you know, you can pretend. Okay, so there's the graph of our parabola. It um, has a vertex at negative 4, negative 4. It's opening up. It has a axis of symmetry. I don't think I actually wrote that down, but the axis of symmetry was x equals negative 4. And uh, we found the y-intercept is at 0, 0,28. So it's not actually going to cross the y-axis until, you know, way up here at 28. Um, and then it goes through, we found this other point that it went through to draw a more accurate graph at negative 3, negative 2. All right, so we did that. We did number three. We graphed the quadratic function, um, including the axis of symmetry and the vertex, and then we said what the y-intercept was. So find the domain and range of the function is the last part. You uh, may remember the definitions of these, but let me remind you. The domain is all possible inputs of your function. All inputs. It's the set of all possible inputs. Or in other words, it's everything, since it's everything you can put into your function, it's the possible x values. Okay, so it's a set of all possible x values. Um, we would write it like this. Usually you can put a D for domain. We put these brackets that tell you that you're looking at a set of values. And then you say what x can be. Well, let's think about it. What can you put into this function? y equals 2 times x plus 4 squared minus 4. Is there anything that x can't be? No. You're just putting in a value, adding 4, squaring it. You can put a negative number, positive number, 0. There's no restriction on what you can put in for x. And you can kind of see that on the graph, right? This is just going to keep going like this, and there's any, any number of values you can put in for x. All real values will work. So I'm just going to let you guys say right in here, you can say um, the domain is all real numbers. Okay? And then the range. Range is all of the possible outputs of the function. What can come out of the function? Once you've put all those values into the function, what can come out of the function. So all possible outputs. Okay, well if we look at our graph, you can see that um, the outputs or the y values, this is the y values, right? The things that come out of the function are the y values. Um, all, they, it can be as positive as we want it to be, because we just keep going up like this. But as far as negative numbers go, the minimum value of this function is right here at negative 4. It's never going to go below that. So we would say for the range that the range is y has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. Those are all of the possible values for the range. Come back here. Okay, y is greater than or equal to negative 4. So when we have a parabola that is opening up like this, that vertex is the minimum value. That's the vertex, and it's the minimum of the graph. And so in that case, our, do our uh, range is going to be all of the values that are greater than or equal to that vertex, that y value of the vertex. If our parabola is opening down, then the range is going to be all of the y values that are less than or equal to that y value. Okay, so for example, if your vertex right here was, let's say, at 0, 10, and it was opening down, then your range would be everything that is less than or equal to 10, because this is now the maximum value of the function. So the range in that case would be y is less than or equal to 10. Alright, that's it for this video. Enjoy the problems!